Hey everyone, welcome to the video. If you're new to ISO 27001 or working towards building a compliant information security management system, this is the place to start. We've put together a practical ISO 27001 compliance checklist, and you can grab it for free via the link below in the description. In this video, I'm going to walk you through each section of that checklist, step by step, using plain language, whether you're going for certification or just want to get your information security under control, this will give you the foundation you need. Here's what we'll cover. Understanding the ISO 27001 standard. Defining the scope of your ISMS. Risk management and documentation. Annex A control implementation. Audits and certification prep. Let's get to it. And we'll start at the very top of the checklist with understanding the standard. All right, let's jump into the first part of your ISO 27001 checklist. Understanding the standard itself. Before you build a compliant information security management system, or ISMS, you need two essential documents. The ISO IEC 27001, the current one is the 2022 edition. This is the actual standards document with the requirements for your ISMS that it must meet. There's also ISO IEC 27002, the current one being the 2022 edition. This is the guidance document that helps you apply the controls listed in Annex A. You can purchase both of these directly from ISO.org. Once you have them, focus on clauses four to 10. These form the backbone of your information management system. Then there's Annex A, which is a list of 93 information security controls. And ISO 27002, which shows you how to apply these controls in a real world. Now let's talk about the PDCA model. That's short for plan, do, check, and act. This is the cycle your ISMS will follow. Plan your policies, risks, objectives. Do the work, put controls in place. Check the performance through audits and monitoring. Act to correct problems and improve over time. Finally, don't go it alone. Brief your team. Key people from IT, HR, ops, and leadership should know what ISO 27001 is and how they'll be involved in making it work. Now that you understand the structure of ISO 27001, it's time to apply it to your organization. And this all starts with defining the scope of your ISMS. The scope sets out the boundaries of what your management system covers. You don't need to include your entire organization, but you do need to be clear about what is in and what is out. You can start by asking, what systems, teams, locations, and processes need to be protected? Are you covering just the cloud infrastructure, your head office, or your development team? Are you excluding anything, like outsource functions or legacy systems? Your scope needs to be documented and justified, especially if there are exclusions. Next, ISO 27001 asks you to define your organizational context. This is covered in clause four of the standard and involves three things. Understanding your internal and external issues, things like regulatory pressure, business goals, supply chain risk, and staff turnover. Identifying interested parties, anyone who expects you to manage your information securely. That could be customers, regulators, suppliers, or your board. Figuring out their relevant requirements. What are they expecting from your security program? All of these need to feed into how you structure your ISMS and how to explain it in your documentation. With your scope and context defined, the next step is to get your leadership formally involved. This is covered in Clause 5 of ISO 27001 and is a requirement that trips up a lot of organisations. Your executives and board can't just delegate security to IT. They need to show visible leadership and commitment to the ISMS. This is what it looks like in practice. First, assign roles and responsibilities. Who's accountable for the ISMS? Who owns the risks? Who drives implementation? You'll likely appoint an ISMS manager or coordinator to keep things moving. Next, you'll create an information security policy. This is your high level statement of intent something that reflects your organization's commitment to protecting information. It doesn't need to be long, but it does need to be approved and communicated. 
Finally, leadership need to support integration of security into daily business processes, not just as an afterthought, but as part of how work gets done. And most importantly, they need to be able to prove their engagement through meeting records, approvals, resourcing decisions, and participation in reviews. Now we're moving into the engine room of your ISO 27001 implementation, the risk assessment and treatment process. Clause 6.1.2 of the standard is where ISO 27001 shows its true nature. It's not about blindly applying controls, it's about understanding and managing risk to your organisation's information. The first step, establish a risk assessment methodology. Start by documenting a consistent way to assess risk. This is your methodology and should be defined. How you'll identify assets, threats and vulnerabilities. How you'll measure the likelihood and impact. How you'll calculate a risk score. What your risk acceptance criteria are. Most organisations use a 5x5 five five risk matrix and here's how it works. You'll give each risk two ratings. One for the likelihood. How likely is this to happen? One for the impact. How bad would it be if it did? Each is rated from one low to five high. Multiply the two numbers to get a risk score out of 25. Let's walk through two quick examples. You assess a threat of your payroll system. You mark the likelihood of four likely, the impact of five critical. That makes your risk score 20, a high risk. Now you assess a threat of your print server. You set the likelihood to two, the impact to three. That gives you a risk score of six, which is a low risk. You can then apply your risk acceptance criteria. For example, one to six are low risk. You may look at risk accepting these ones. Eight to 14, moderate. You may want to monitor or put some mitigations in place to lower the score of those. 15 or higher, that's a high risk. You need to treat those in some way. Now step two. Identify information assets and associated threats. Start by building your risk register. For every in-scope system or process, list your assets, identify relevant threats and vulnerabilities, assign a likelihood impact and total risk score, record how you'll treat each risk and who owns it. The third step, you select controls and create treatment plans. Now decide how you'll treat each risk. Are you going to accept it? Are you going to avoid it? Are you going to transfer it, for example, bring in a partner or look at insurance? Or are you going to mitigate it by applying controls? If you mitigate, choose from the 93 Annex A controls or any other security controls that could be relevant from any other standard. These are then listed in your statement of applicability, which maps your risks to the controls you're using and why. Create a risk treatment plan outlining what's being done, when, by who, and how it will be tracked. Okay, so once you've set your scope, defined your roles, and worked through risk management, you'll need to make sure that you've documented everything properly. ISO 27001 isn't just about doing the right things, it's about being able to prove that you're doing them. That means policies, procedures, records, and evidence. Now, the standard doesn't give you a fixed list of documents, but there are certain ones that are either explicitly required or essential for demonstrating compliance. Here's a practical breakdown of what you'll need to have in place. Your ISMS scope document defines what part of your business are covered. Information security policy, a high level document of your intent, signed off by management and shows commitment. Risk assessment and treatment process, your documented methodology. A risk register includes assets, threats, scores, and treatment decisions. Your statement of applicability or SOA, a list of Annex A controls and any other ones you might want to include with justification. A risk treatment plan, actions, responsibilities, and deadlines. An asset inventory, information systems, data sets, devices, and owners. An access control policy, how access to systems and data is managed. Incident management procedure, what happens when things go wrong. An internal audit plan and records. Evidence that you're actually reviewing your ISMS. Management review minutes, showing the leadership's engagement. Corrective actions register, how non-conformities are tracked and fixed. These aren't just for the auditor, they're to help you with your ISMS function day to day. 
If you're using templates, make sure that they're actually tailored to your environment. Boilerplate won't cut it here. Let's talk about what tends to be the most daunting part of ISO 27001, the Annex A controls. In the 2022 version of the standard, there are 93 controls grouped into four categories. They span organizational controls, people controls, physical controls, and technological controls. Now here's the important bit. You don't have to implement all 93 controls. ISO 27001 is risk-based. You choose the controls that are relevant to the risks you've identified earlier and document that in your statement of applicability. So how do you choose the right controls? Each control in Annex A is linked to a common security objective. Things like protecting data in transit, managing user access, or detecting anomalies. To make sense of them, use the companion document ISO 27002. It explains each control in plain English, with purpose, guidance, examples, related threats and risks. For example, Annex A Control 5.15 Access Control, you might apply this to mitigate risks around unauthorized access to your HR platform. Annex A Control 8.28 Secure Coding, if you develop software internally, this might be critical to you. And if you don't develop software, then maybe this one is not applicable to your organization. Annex A Control 7.4, physical entry controls, might only apply if you have office locations or a data center. You're expected to justify what controls you've applied, which ones you've excluded, and why, whether each control has been implemented or not yet implemented. All of this goes into your statement of applicability. Now, how can you make control implementation practical? Don't try and roll out every control all at once. Instead, link each control to a risk. Assign a control owner, set a realistic implementation timeline, track evidence like logs, policies, settings, or procedures, make the control manageable and auditable. Once your ISMS is up and running, ISO 27001 expects you to actively maintain and improve it, not just let it sit on a shelf. This next section is all about how you review your ISMS, deal with the issues, and make sure it keeps getting better over time. First, you want to create an internal audit schedule. Start by creating a formal internal audit plan. This isn't a once-off task. You'll need to schedule audits at plan intervals to assess whether your ISMS meets the ISO 27001 standard, whether your policies and procedures are being followed, and whether your controls are actually working. The schedule should cover the full scope of your ISMS over time, and auditors should be impartial, meaning they don't audit areas that they're responsible for. Conduct regular audits and record findings when you run an audit. Review procedures, controls, and supporting evidence. Interview staff, review logs, and check documentation. Record any non-conformities, observations, or opportunities for improvement. Make sure the results are documented and shared to the right people. You then need to look at implementing corrective actions for non-conformities. If a control isn't implemented properly or something is not working, you'll need to investigate the root cause, define and assign corrective actions, track them to completion, review and update affected policies or procedures. This step proves your ISMS is responsive and adaptable. You'll then need to plan for continuous improvement of the ISMS. ISO 27001 wants to see your ISMS is evolving. That means learning from audit findings, incidents, or near misses, incorporating user feedback, adapting to new risks, business challenges, or technologies. It's not about fixing the problems, it's about actively improving how you manage information security. All right, you've built your ISMS, implemented your controls, and run your audits. Now it's time to prepare for certification. Getting certified is about proving that your ISMS meets the ISO 27001 standard and that you've got documentation, controls, and processes to back it up. First, you'll need to engage a reputable certification body. Start by choosing an accredited certification body. That's recognized and experienced with ISO 27001. Look for JASAN's accredited bodies here in Australia or for other countries, check that they're listed with the IAF globally. Conduct a gap analysis before your audit. It's a good idea to conduct a gap analysis. This is a mock assessment of your ISMS to identify missing documentation, weak controls, 
any non-conformities you can fix in advance, and you can do this internally or bring an external consultant in to give you a fresh perspective. You need to prepare for the stage one audit, which is about documentation readiness. The stage one audit is a documentation review. The auditor will want to see your ISMS scope, your risk assessments, your policies, your statement of applicability, internal audit and management review records. This confirms that you're ready for the full audit. In stage two, the auditor will test your ISMS in practice. This includes conducting interviews, evidence checks, and reviewing how controls are operating across the organization. Once certified, you'll need to keep your ISMS up to date. Certifications last three years, but you'll have surveillance audits every 12 months to make sure your documentation stays current. And this brings us to the end of our ISO compliance checklist walkthrough. Let's quickly recap the full journey. You've learned what ISO 27001 is really about. You've defined your scope and context. You brought leadership into the process. You assessed risks and selected controls. You built your documentation. You implemented Annex A controls. You audited, reviewed, and improved. And finally, you got ready for certification. Now these steps don't just get you ready for an audit. It helps you build a repeatable, resilient, and risk-driven approach to information security. Whether you're a small business starting fresh or a larger team leveling up your governance, this checklist gives you a structured path to follow. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you grab the free ISO 27001 checklist, the same one we used in this video. You'll find the download link right below in the description. Use this to track your implementation, prep for audits, or bring your team along for the journey. Thanks for watching and good luck as you take your next steps towards ISO 27001 compliance.